Morning guys, Baz here, Well, the Fabber, and welcome back to the channel. So I have just got back off my holiday, um, if you did watch the last chapter you'll notice that I just got back from my holiday. I came in yesterday and uh, went through a few jobs, we've got a few defects on a few trucks and uh, a few things going on today. So the first job we're going to start with is this 19 plate, 8 wheel tipper, the check strap has actually broke where it goes into the door so the mount on the door's broke yeah so i'm actually going to take the door off and to take the door off there's the wiring loom that runs down into here and it'll go onto a plug that plug there we'll take that out and i'm going to take the door off and i'm just going to see what's actually going on in here because we've never done one before if you look inside there director you see how it's all come loose with inside so all that will need welding back on solid to the door frame we've also got uh, a trailer a walking floor trailer that needs some new legs so these are aftermarket legs and they don't actually fit so what we're going to do um, we'll need to lengthen that plate probably to about the and put a few more holes in it but I'll show you in a little bit when we pull the trailer over or we'll go over to the trailer with these one or the other um, we've got an edge to fit on a DL420 deuce and loader uh, that's in the yard that's our, our loader that's in the yard so we'll bang that on today um, and there'll be a couple of other little defects that we've got to do but uh, a lot of people ask what hours we work here yeah um, Pretty much minimum six till six every day and six till 12 on a saturday but obviously overtime's optional uh but the lads always want the overtime so that's pretty good and it is hard to find lads that want to put the overtime in, i'll be honest i i'm lucky to have a good team around me that do want to put the hours in um and at the moment we are looking for a new truck fitter in the truck fitting shop so yeah if you are interested in a in a position here within the truck workshop truck fitting shop should i say uh drop in an email uh, that's ian at hurtplant.co.uk right director we better crack on with this door so i have actually been off like i say on holiday for a week i went to a beefer for a week uh, these two lads have been working on site all week and uh, i went to check on the job that they were doing yesterday something that uh, the customer doesn't want on camera so obviously some people don't want things on camera some people do um, but yeah they've done a brilliant job of what they did through the week uh, but oh well you've done all right should i say That's a fair. you've done all right um but yeah so i mean they, they've had torrential rain all last week in england so and i've been in the sun all week so <laughs> so that was pretty cool when i got back but it was bad yesterday wasn't it Hmm. So we're not, not too sure how this is going to go. I've never welded one of these back in before. I've done them on the uh, on the scanners, on the actual frame itself, on the on the body, on the pillar. But on the actual door itself, I've never we've never done one, so we'll see. What well, crack is when we get it off? much weight in the door yeah but we've got a crane so we might as well use it so whilst the boys are taking this off the director's just had to nip off somewhere i'm just going to uh to measure these and then i'll go and uh, measure the trailer and see how big that plate actually needs to be on the trailer well, i'll leave you with these boys taking this off for a minute
right, so as you can see now we've got the door off. It is all broke with inside the door. That is a little bit tricky that, to be fair. It might be a case of cutting a bit out and welding a bit bigger bit back in, I guess. and show it's broke all around that edge so what I'm thinking if we just took a little bit out of this so we can get down there and weld that back with the TIG welder it's a little bit thin for MIG well, we're only running 1.2 wire on the MIG in here so you could weld that cal couldn't you TIG uh, just clean this up a bit. Gee, if we could clean the back of it up, we'll try welding it back in, yeah? Right, we'll go for that, we'll go for that option first. Right, so what we're doing here now, we are going to take this down a little bit. So, Jay, yeah, just put the band file on there, just see how easy it is to set that material down. So can you see how easy it is to come down with a band file rather than trying to cut that out with your cutting disc? Yeah, we'll take it down with that. We'll clean. We'll clean all the metal up on the inside of here, clean this up, clean this up, and then we'll weld that back in. But whilst they're doing that, we'll just go and look at this uh, job for these legs. Cal, you can weld that up, yeah? I'll go and wear this up. All right, so here we got a, it's either a ejector trailer or a walking floor. Um, the legs on it, well, for starters, there's a foot missing off that side and they won't come down fast, so something has gone with inside the legs, yeah? So them legs that I just showed you in the workshop there, the, uh, the top plate only comes down about 300 mil. So it'll only come down to about there, yeah. So they are an aftermarket leg. So what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to extend that plate there. So if we measure from the top of the leg down to that hole, really, we only need to come down to here. Uh, but if we come down 600 mil, that's 600 mil from there. And then when we take the leg off, all we need to do is fire a couple of balls in. Um, but we need to keep the legs as high as possible. So the other thing we've got to look for, can you see this little slot here? That bar that runs from one leg to the other. As long as the legs are as high as possible, that's all that matters because these, Trailers run on uh, they run on like landfill sites on on frag and stuff. And what happens? These get ripped off. I've actually seen the whole legs get ripped off. So we'll try and keep them as high as possible, as long as it, obviously as long as it'll take lift off the unit. Um, so yeah, we'll extend that plate on the leg in the workshop now. We'll whip these off. We'll bang a few more holes in them legs in there. Get them off. Get them on. Easy job. Right, so what we got here, we've got 270, so we need to go down 600. So we need to go to there, yeah, to that point. They can come off, we don't need them. So I'll take them off. And if we look at that. So all, so all it needs really is a 10 milli plate on there, welded to the leg, bang a few holes in it, and then they'll be good to go on that trailer. So I'll do that myself now. Right, so we want to be around 
350 by 227. Sorry, right, Baz. Yeah, I've got a bit of a welding job now. He's doing on the sweet break. Let's have a look, Baz. Let's have a look. Be alright with that for a minute. Is this your sweeper, Phil? It is, yeah. Just putting a new subframe on it. Well, this is our truck workshop, yeah? Right, what's happening there? The bolts are pulled through that, whether we can put a piece in it just to... Uh, to right, so that. this is like a little canopy that goes over the brush, yeah? Or does it go at the back of the brush? At the front. The front. Uh, we're putting a new A-frame on it, because all the bushes are worn, so we're going to put all new bushes and A-frame on it. Right, is that what's that's happening what, this morning, yeah? That's what I'm doing this morning. But when I've come across it, obviously that's gone through there. Right, so what we'll have to do here, we'll basically have to weld a little plate over that. Yeah. We'll put a couple of holes in as it's pulled through, yeah? Yeah. Straighten it up a bit. Yeah. Yeah? So I presume you want to put this back on today? If it can, if it's yeah. not too busy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take that with me now. Appreciate that. Thank All right, you very mate. much, Baz. Cheers. Yeah, when we get a minute, we'll just tidy this up and just put a little little three milli plate on that. Well, you know, when we're done with this job, yeah. And there's only two holes in it, something out. Yeah. We'll do that in a bit, yeah. Right, back to this. So, like I said, these can come off. We want to cut a plate 350 by. 227, 350 by 227 be 10. So here we got a bit of 10 mil plate. 350 by 227. Right, so this is a 300, 300 by 10 mil flat bar this. So this will be all right. So we'll go 350. Yeah. Square and 227, so we can look at the square. 227, we've got 226, so that'll allow for the chalk line. Yeah. And then along. Now I'll cut that with the plasma. I want two of them and we'll just need a couple of holes on each side and we'll fully weld this to the leg. Alright, so I'm just going to cut this with a plasma. This is a Powermax 85 with a sink cartridge on it, yeah? All glasses off. Dark screen. We'll do that on that side. Right. So can you see how I've, how I've marked two lines there? That is to allow for the cut, yeah? Let's see where we're at there. And one thing I will tell you, that I've been off the gun a little bit lately, yeah, meaning welding gun, and I've got something wrong with my eyes. So, the director is pushing me to get my eyes tested. <laughs> because I tried doing a run, I tried. <laughs> We'll go into that a little bit more some other time. Right. Yeah, so basically, my eyes need to be tested. 
Big time. Right, so that's one plate. So Carl's just doing a little bit of TIG welding here. What size wire are you running, Carl? Uh, 1.6 there. Uh, and what wire is it? Uh, it's just a standard mouth steel wire. Still going a little bit, it's a little bit thin. It's, it's a little bit thin. A bit of paint mixed in as well. Ah, oh, you'll get it, boy. You'll get it. Alright. So now I'm just taking the uh, slitting disc out. We're going to put a buffing disc in. Four and a half inch grinder. Tighten it up. Just take all these off. We'll take the paint off here. And then when we sit with plate on, we'll just weld it along this edge here. So as we've been doing that, Jay has taken the old legs off, which are here. So as you can see, they've got holes all the way down. Yeah, bang one of them onto these trestles, let's see where we're at with them. On this side some. Right, so I'm pretty sure Chuck is a oh, I've got a tape here. The hole centers will be alright this way. One thing I didn't check before. So we're at 190 there. 190, yeah, so <laughs> That turned out alright, I didn't check that before did I? Right, so if you look at that now I'm just going to clean this plate up and set So can you see how we use a 10mm plate so it go flush Yeah So we are going a little bit over the top Because we only need a couple of holes in this plate You know what I mean, I could have just welded a couple of flat bars wherever it needs the holes, yeah? But we might as well just put a full solid plate on bang the holes in where they need to be, I can see where the old holes have been and uh, then chuck them back on bang on <clears throat> so when you when you do check hole centres yeah people, I always go from plus hundreds yeah so don't, <clears throat> don't go like that from the centre of the hole yeah go to the edge of the hole right so we're going to the edge of the hole there can you see we're plus hundred yeah and then go to the edge of that hole so that's your centres, yeah? So rather than trying to guess it, trying to guess the centre like that, yeah? Always go to the edge of the hole, 
to the outside edge of the hull or the inside to the inside one or the other yeah all right so the only holes that are actually being used on this leg is one two three four five so that's ten holes yeah so we measure down to the first hole which is 190 to the center right so we're looking there now that's 190 to the center right and then they are if we look there 57 mil so just make sure they're the same 57 mil yeah can you see so then that will be 57 mil from there to the center of that one yeah so what i'm going to do now and i've measured down from the first hole all the way down yeah from the first hole all the way down and square them across center pop them now so you got some earplugs in director yes center punch That's a proper centre punch for you. William Moore's Preston. Alright, so what we've got here is a Geeker 80 ton punch steel work here. Uh, it's got a 22 mil punch in it at the moment. So we want an 18 mil because we've got 16 milli bolts. And uh, then I'll show you how to punch the holes in the plate. Right, so steel worker, punch, yeah. If you look at the punch, you can see how it's got a little nipple in the end of the punch. Right, and if you line your plate up with your centre pot, you see how it's lined up in the centre pot now. Down, straight through, yeah. Up, out. Nice clean hole. One thing you need to remember with these, if you're punching, whatever thickness material you're punching, so say this is 10mm plate, you can't put an 8mm punch through that. Although some people will, well there's chances of the punch exploding, yeah? Or say a 20mm plate and you're trying to punch an 18mm hole, that is a definite no-no, yeah? So always, the thinner material, the bigger the punch. Down. So we can, I can take my hand off the pedal. There is different settings that we can run this steel worker on. But you take your hand off the pedal, keep your hands well away from the deck. That's in, down. Make sure you got your glasses on as well when you're doing something like this. Down, let it stop, into the hole, down, punch. Yeah. Right, so now the holes are punched in the plate. The plate's clamped on. Just double check your hole centres are actually bang on where they need to be. Both sides, check, double check with the old leg. And now we're gonna, now we've got it clamped at both sides, we know the plate can't move. We'll tack it in four positions. Eyes. Eyes. Uh, 
that's why I took the paint off before underneath. So what I'll do now, I'll just do the same with this one. I'll get my welding mask on and we'll weld them up. Right, so now we've got that welded back into the door. This door has actually been ripped round at some point and it's had a new check strap on it. Right, because that is a little bit that way. That, see that bend there? That should be more close to the pillar. But there's a gap there, isn't there? Yeah. Is it shutting all right? Oh yeah, that's all right. Ah, phone never stops, man. This phone never stops. They can wait. Right, so. Does it still need tightening on yet? It still needs tightening up a bit, yeah. So right, so let me just, as long as it's shutting all right, everything's in line. Yeah, I'm happy with that, Jay, yeah. Bone it up, put door card back on. That'll be right, yeah. Right, I'll get my welding gear on and uh, weld these legs. All right, guys, so today I'm going to be welding with the Lorch Micro MIG 400, yeah. That's 400 amp. We're going to be running around 230 to 250 amps. We're using a 1.2 mil diamond spark wire, which is baller wire. Good quality wire, yeah. And I use a quantum universal earth head mask. Um, so this is um, a synergic set. So if you look here now, I can't, it's, it's switched into Synergic, yeah? So Synergic means, whereas we're running at 225 amps, uh, if I touch that, that's your millimetres. So that's the millimetres of thickness of material that you're welding, yeah? So on this, on this particular job here, the thinnest material will be that leg material there, which will be about four mil, five mil, that's 10 mil. So we're gonna go in between at seven, and like I say, about 235, 250 amps. So I'll switch it into auto, which is, if you go here now, that's normal, that's auto. All I need to do now is pull the trigger and, the, and I can take my hand off the trigger and it'll just keep going, yeah? So we'll just lay a run down and see how it's running. Nice. So it only needs one pass. That's like an eight milli pass, which is plenty. If you look here, you've got like a smaller pass there on the actual bracket, there's original bracket, yeah? So this, what we've done here now, is a lot stronger than, than it was originally. So I'll box this off, director.
Right, so this is the edge for the DL420 and the Arger. Should be, uh, yeah, it's a 50mm edge this. These should be the plow bolts in this bag. Make sure, yeah, and the plow bolts come. They always order the plow bolts with the edge, yeah. Um, well, that is an HB500 edge. Alright, so we'll get that on after brew. Alright, kiddo. What? It's got a problem with the T-cab car. T-cab. Let's have a look director. Ah, I better know what it is, isn't it that aircon pump? Yeah. Right, so as a lot of you are aware of our T-cab, the flagship, yeah? The flagship truck. It's in the yard this morning. And I do believe there is a problem with the bracket. I think it's the aircon unit that it's uh, holding on now. I think these T-cabs, yeah, they're, uh, they're actually built somewhere else. I don't think you can actually buy it direct from Scania. I'm not 100% sure, sure on that, but Carl is our main fitter here. Uh, this is his van. Where is he? Where? All right, so, oh, give, it, give us camera director. So this is... This is Carl, our main fitter. Right. Tell us what's happening here, lad. Uh, his overnight cooler has snapped off the brackets here. Oh, so that's the overnight cooler? Yeah. See, that, that bracket there, that's like a big uh, piece of C section. It has all this weight, you know what I mean? All just swinging on it. How much weight is there on that? Uh, well, okay. I don't know, 20 kilograms, 25. Do you reckon you could get that bracket off for us? Get that off, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So Carl will take that bracket off, we'll weld it up, we'll put it back on and then we'll try and come up with a new design to stop it from breaking again, yeah? So it looks like it's not much of material there that's holding all that weight, is that right? That's right, yeah, that must, must only be 8, maybe 10 mil C section, it's not not a lot and because it comes all the way to this side, it's twisting it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you take that off then Carl, give us the bracket, yeah. we'll weld it up, get it back on and then we'll make a plan of strengthening it up, yeah? Yeah, always. Sound. Sound. So do you want to have a quick look at the tea cab whilst it's in the yard? Now then, I have had a phone call off Scania about this a couple of weeks ago, uh, asking me if I can design a new bracket for all the tea cabs. So once we get this bracket off and put them back up, we'll have a look at strengthening it up, yeah? Right, so what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll fasten these to the trailer now. We'll use new bolts. I always use new bolts when I replace stuff like this. And we're supposed to be having a brew right now, but brew lads take it longer than normal, so we'll crack on till he gets here. Every Saturday we'll have a We'll have a bacon butty, <laughs> although we have one more stairs, don't we? <laughs> right, let's go to the trailer. I'm going to try and get this up as high as possible, Jay. Yeah. We'll go for... can't remember which hole it was now. So he wants to be as high as possible, yeah? Um, that middle bit at the back. This one here? That, this bit goes it's... through this uh, slot on the top. Right. Yeah. Get that bolt in. Higher, well higher. Yeah. It's pushing right there. Get that bolt in, Cal. Like that's where we want to be. Get that bolt in. Are we in? Right, so... Yeah, we're on top back of that. Yeah, that's good that, because you can see how high up it is now. Right, 
got some nuts on. Right, so they've actually got the Scania bracket off. I've had a look at it. It will be an easy repair that I'll show you in a minute. Hello. All right, so am I in work? <laughs> Pope Catholic, or what? Pope Catholic. What are you telling me? Was? Yeah. <laughs> I'm on it, I'm already on it son, I'm already on it. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be fixed, it'll be fixed today. All right, I've come up with a good idea of fixing it as well. Yeah, it'll be done today, mate, it'll be done today, don't you worry. All right, mate, cheer a bit. All right, mate, Handle, so I know which one this is going in. Do what, lad? Grab the handle, so I so know which one. Yeah, that one, yeah? Oh, cow up. Right. That's the one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Down. Down. Right, director. We'll let them button that up. Then we'll get someone to test it. Make sure it's right. So I've just seen that both legs are going to go down evenly. Make sure everything's good. Now, happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Find that back up, lad. All right, so that's them legs buttoned up. Up and down, working fine. Still not had a butter yet. But, as you know, one of my lads left last week. Well, some of you might not know, but some of you will know. And we've got a new starter. This is Luke Forrester. Hello. And he's, uh, he's coming to start with us a week on Monday, so just tell us a bit about yourself, Luke, and where you've worked before. Local lad, 26 year old, um, yeah, done a lot in ag game, a lot of structural steel, and yeah, just keen to learn. So he's done a lot of welding, and he's, uh, he has done a lot of structural stuff, so he wants to come over to the plant side and learn a bit more on the plant welding, and the plant game, and the plant fitting, so I have had a good long conversation with him, a good hour, hour chat, and I think he's ideal for the for the position that we're offering at the moment so we'll soon find out if he's, uh, That's it. If he's worth his metal <laughs> shall we say but we'll find out more on luke in a couple of weeks yeah oh yeah and the other good thing the key thing the, the key thing yeah i need big hours yeah and my big hours is 70 hours he's used to working 80 90 hours so he's dropping his hours to come work for me so that's good and that is hard to find not like these two here who like doing 45 <laughs> right guys, so this is the bracket off the T-cab. Yeah, can you see it's just like a C-section that's been folded, pressed, right, that's broke. So what it is, it, it bolts onto the chassis, and then you've got a big, like, night heater, aircon unit, that's fastened on that, flexing away, yeah, it's just snapped off, right. So it's, it's an easy, easy repair, this. But obviously we're just going to weld that back together. And all we'll do is put a stiffener inside the, inside that because there's nothing that runs in that channel. Yeah, there's no pipes run through it, there's nothing. So why they've left that like that, I've no idea. For it to just break off. So obviously it's going down raw, bouncing about, bang, snapped. So we'll just put a little gusset, gusset inside there. Put that back on, job done. All the way, Tom. All the way. I'll do that. Right, so as you see, we just let it go a little bit. 
Let go a little bit too much again here. And we'll just dash the bolts off again. And bang the new edge on. 20 minutes of a job. And very soon, me and Chris Allen, yeah, the professional struggler, are going to do a collab together. And he's got his little uh, Makita gun, has he? He loves his Makita, yeah. But uh, I'm a bit of a Milwaukee man, but you never know what sponsors are out there, you know what I'm saying? But we'll uh, have a little gun off, yeah, against the Makita to my Milwaukee. So, Chris Allen, when I see you, that's what's happening, boy. So, we'll just gun these up now. So Tony, Tony Coy, yeah, this is some boy, yeah, so but we are going to start doing more recovery jobs and he has done a few recovery jobs with me so far that haven't been on camera but the ones that are going to be on camera, he will come with me and you'll, <laughs> you'll just have to see what it's all but we get, we get up to some missions, I tell you now, we get up to some missions but uh, anyway, that's, that's to do some back to work the talons just under bracket for the Scania T cab, so we'll go on there, let Carl put that back on and then we'll have a look at it when it's all buttoned up. Right, so Carl's uh, well, there's a little bracket up off the T cab, yeah, put a little gusset plate in it. So Scania in Holland, wherever they make the T cabs, yeah. Let's see if this lasts because that only lasted six months. Carl? I don't think that's been on camera as well, Carlos. What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Carlos. Hey, old boy. There ain't no better fitter than this lad, tell you now. Truck fitter. Alright, so whilst our cow's doing a bit of cleaning up, I'll just read a few comments like I said I always will. So let's just pick any at random. We've got Ian, G. 2130. 
Another great video, Baz and director. Can I ask Baz, what type of welding do you enjoy doing the most? Likes of stick, mig or tig. And what's the most challenging thing you've had to weld? Keep up the good work as always. All right then, so the most challenging thing I've had to weld, hmm, was probably when I had to get my cordings back in the day doing overhead stick, yeah? So, few, few, stick, few welders out there that are corded now, I'm no longer corded, but I used to be corded for many years whilst I was doing structural steel. And um, the hardest thing that I found, because I had to do the procedure for all the lads that used to work for me, um, was the overhead. Getting that root in right, and then getting all your runs on top. Uh, and I did it on a 15 milli butt overhead. Um, and I had to do it twice. <laughs> And it worked good because uh, obviously you know you never want a failure, but I did get a failure back in the day, but you know, it is what it is, passed it second time. So yeah. And then from then on really, once you've got your hook, your overhead stick um, certificate, you're pretty much coded to do anything on stick other than pipe welding. Right, next comment. Simon Falsham, 6867. Finding all the content great. Please can you let me know what? brand of the black coat you have as I would like to get one for my lads. Mm. The one that me and the director have got, they are Heli Hansen jackets. Um, yeah, give the camera director. I presume you're talking about this one. They are Heli Hansen, let's look at the arm. The director will never be on camera by the way. But yeah, they are Heli Hansen jackets and we are looking at uh, doing our own brand of jackets, soon. There you go, director. Next comment. Loving the videos, Baz. You work well with your brother, pal. He's my brother. We're gonna work well, aren't we? So, cheers, pal, anyway. For, thanks for watching. Next comment. Uh, HFDZL, that is. Be handy to have a water truck to wash equipment down, excavator, undercarriage, and crushes screens. Yeah, well, a lot of sites we do have power washes on sites, but a lot of sites we don't. You know what I mean? It just depends where it is. A lot of, a lot of the quarries that we have do have uh, wash plants and stuff like that to wash the machines down, but <laughs> if the lads use them or not, that's a different story. Right, Sean Hall, 2901. Can't wait to get my merch. Good mum. Hope, hope you had a good holiday, Baz. Bet the old bank account took a good bashing. <laughs> Two bags it took, two bags I spent on that holiday. That's a beefer for you. I ain't going to a beefer again, it's too expensive. All right, so next, uh, Harkin James. Love the content, Baz and Director. Therefore, give Snowball Engineering a watch. I already do give Snowball Engineering a watch. I watch all his stuff, yeah. Um, great up and coming channel. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, Snowball's cool. I've always, I always plug them on Instagram as well. So we've just gotten, uh, we've just shot over 72,000 sub uh, followers on Instagram. So thanks for that. And enough for questions, director. So there's our Carlos. Just buttoned it up. And there's the little bracket down there with the gusset plate in. So you can see how much weight it is actually holding that. Just show them, Carl, with your hands. So it's holding that big bracket there. How much weight we say to that? 20, 30 kilos? 25, yes. Yeah. So hopefully what we've done there, by putting that little gusset plate in, I'm hoping that it will last. But time will tell. Time will tell. And I'll, uh, I'll send Scania a little bill for that, eh? What do you reckon? Yeah, double it for my weapon. Double it for you, Carlos, son. Oh, well. man. You know what I mean? Proper boss. Big boy. Uh, yeah, for anybody that's wondering, yeah, all these names on the side of this trailer are all the companies within the Fox Group. But the main one is, yeah, oh, that one. <laughs> and there's our little leafy boy. Hey. Over there. Over there. 
like the director to me. Alright guys, so people have been asking about a day in the life of Welder Faber. Alright, well, this is half a day in the life of Welder Faber. It's now half 11. We start at 6 every day. This is a Saturday. So that's just a little glimpse of what we do, yeah? Um, so yeah, we thought we'd do it a little bit different. So don't forget to like and subscribe, remember? That always helps the algorithm to build this channel, if you want to help us build this channel, yeah? And we've got to build this channel because we've got to get the director paid for starters. We've got to pay for all this camera gear. You know what I mean? There's a few quid been put into that. And everything that we, back, that, uh, we sell on the merch, yeah? We'll be going back in to buy more camera gear to do this work. And maybe to give the director a little bit of, a few quid here and there, so. All right, guys, so that's it for today. Check out my website here for the merch. And oh yeah, we are having a few issues with the international shipping at the moment, but hopefully by the time this is out, that will be all buttoned up and sorted. Check out my other episode from last week and a few that you might not have seen before. Cheers and thanks for watching.